The Biden administration has signaled to European allies in recent weeks that the U.S. will allow them to export S-16 fighter jets to Ukraine said a source familiar with the discussions, as the White House comes under increasing pressure from members of Congress and allies to help. Ukraine acquires the planes amid intensifying Russian airstrikes. Administration officials were not aware, however, of formal requests from any allies to export the F-16s, and State Department officials, normally tasked with documents approving such third-party transfers, had not been notified to start work, officials said. A number of European countries have supplies of US-made F-16s, including the Netherlands, which has signaled a willingness to export some of them to Ukraine. But the US had to agree to the third-party transfer because of the sensitive US jet technology. While the US remains reluctant to send its own F-16s to Kyiv, U.S. officials tell CNN the administration is prepared to approve exports of the jets to Ukraine if allies decide to do so with their supplies. National Security Council Coordinator for Strategic Communications John Kirby declined to comment specifically on the possibility of the U.S. sending F-16 fighter jets to Ukraine, but said broadly that the U.S. was looking ahead to future capabilities and needs. The F-16 is not on the agenda at the G-7, he said, although the plane could certainly appear on the sidelines of the summit. U.S. lawmakers and congressional staff have joined the F-16 lobbying campaign, urging the government to provide the jets so Ukraine can establish control of its skies. As a bipartisan group of MPs, we view the transfer of F-16 fighter aircraft to Ukraine as essential to provide Kyiv with the necessary air support capabilities to fully defend their country against the unprovoked, illegal and brutal Russian invasion, and to make a profit. Territorial necessary to take back their country, wrote a group of Republican and Democrat lawmakers in a letter to President Joe Biden on Wednesday obtained by CNN. The issue is expected to be the subject of debate at the next NATO summit in Vilnius, Lithuania, in July, officials said. Another open question is where the Ukrainian pilots will train with these F-16s, a spokesman for British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak said earlier this week that Britain and the Netherlands were looking to form an international coalition, not only to procure jets for Ukraine, but also to train Ukrainian pilots in fourth-generation fighters, which are more advanced than the fleet. In March, the U.S. hosted two Ukrainian pilots at a military base in Tucson, Arizona to evaluate their skills using a flight simulator and assess how much time it would take them to learn to fly various U.S. military aircraft, including the F-16. But the U.S. currently has no plans to expand that training. A defense official told CNN, even though Congress is setting aside money in the 2023 budget for such training. U.S. allies with F-16s could conduct training for Ukrainian fighter pilots, or the aircraft manufacturer, Lockheed Martin, could conduct training as a private contractor. But the defense official said such an arrangement would likely require some level of U.S. participation even if it did not require formal U.S. approval, such as transfers of U.S. weapons abroad. Ukraine stepped up their lobbying campaign. Top Ukrainian officials have stepped up their public lobbying campaign for the U.S.-made F-16 in recent months, arguing they urgently needed to defend against Russian missile and drone attacks. Russia launched an unprecedented series of missile attacks on Kyiv early Thursday, a Ukrainian official said, just days after Russia launched a barrage of six hypersonic missiles near the capital aimed at destroying Ukraine's Patriot air defense system. The series of airstrikes against Kyiv, of unprecedented strength, intensity and variety, continues, said Serhii Popko, head of Kyiv's civil and military administration. Without the jets, Ukraine will have to improvise, officials say. 
Defense officials and congressional staff told CNN that Ukrainian forces had in recent weeks used a U.S.-made Patriot air defense system to shoot down at least one distant Russian fighter jet. Russian jets mostly stay behind Russian lines, making them difficult for Ukrainians to target with short-range systems such as NASAM. The Russian planes targeted by the Patriots were carrying out bombing runs to fire missiles at Ukrainian targets, U.S. officials say, which Russia has been doing throughout the past year to maximize civilian casualties. Officials said Ukraine was responsible for making their own firing decisions once the West provided the Patriot system, noting it was up to Ukraine when and how to engage the Patriots to protect their people. The advanced fighter jets will make it easier for Ukraine to target Russian aircraft, according to congressional staff, without having to shell out expensive Patriot munitions made to intercept ballistic missiles. However, some U.S. officials are skeptical of that argument, noting that Russia has an extensive anti-aircraft system that can easily shoot down an F-16. Ukraine has not conducted many air missions with its warplanes for that reason, officials say. Still, there is a belief in Kyiv that with enough public pressure, Ukraine could eventually secure the weapons systems that were once considered a red line by the West. HIARs, battle tanks and Patriot batteries were all once considered off-limits. They are now in the countryside, or heading there soon. While the UK does not have F-16s of its own, the British government appears to have turned the matter around over the last few months. In January, a spokesperson for the British government told reporters that Britain believed the jets were very advanced and take months to learn to fly. Given that, we believe it would be impractical to send the jet to Ukraine. On Monday, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said that Kyiv and London were actively moving forward on their procurement plans. We need F-16s, Andriy Yermak, head of the Ukrainian President's office, and I thank our allies for their decision to work in this direction, including training our pilots.